Our last but not least Lightning Talk speaker is Daniela Silva, who's coming to us from Brazil. She is the co-founder and director of Espera and the coordinator of the Transparency Hacker community there. I'm Daniela, as Lorena said before, and I'm part of this community that's called Transparency Hacker. You can call us Transparency Hackers if that's easier, that's okay. And there we are in Brazil, and I could pretty much change the name of this presentation to how to make open data with no open data, because that's pretty much how we started there, and no money, because money wasn't exactly the trigger that got us into what we have today. So what happened is that back in 2009, uh, I was like researching public transparency and how could internet change it. And I was also part of, a, uh, I was working at a place really cool, that's the House of Digital Culture, where people make a lot of transformation using digital tools. And I happened to come to the Transparency Camp West. And after coming here and gathering with a lot of people, we thought, mm, maybe we should make a Transparency Hack Day, an event just like that, but that's more hands-on and where people go to build projects that they wanna build over public information for political reasons. And after this first event in 2009, we gathered around 100 people, and these 100 people, we started a community. And this is the community that we have until today in Brazil, a community that's focused on projects that people wanna do together. This is our main, uh, uh, our main space for encounter and for conversation, that's our mailing list. We have now over 900 people that are part of that in Brazil. Many of them are very active. Many of, many of them are not only talking and discussing, but also building, uh, building new projects and creating new ideas about open data and transparency. I don't want to talk much about uh, the applications that we built, like this one. That's, do you know the 311 system that you call when there's a problem in your street and you want it to get fixed? So we scrape the data out of it. Someone is scraping the data out of it to make this application to show it, what's really important. Or even uh, the next one, please. Yes. Like this one. Do you think the, account, the accounting, like how much your deputies are spending, is something important for people to know? Like this was not really open before, but someone scraped the data and made it. Uh, but I don't want to really focus a lot in our applications because I think there's something more important to speak of that is like the process that we go through to build these things together. I saw on a slide just like this on a on an elementary teacher presentation. She was like making movies with her children. And when I saw that, I said, hooray, someone said that. Thank you, because I think we're so much focused in products today. And I think the process of what we are doing is so much more important. There is like a huge opportunity for political change behind open data. So we're not only opening data because we think this is great and we are gonna make great applications over this, but especially we think this is an opportunity to change the way politics works. And I think you could do that in Brazil, like, as an example, being a community like Transparency Hacker, the organization is very loose and we don't have like a letter of principles. I used to say to people that I think we look much more like the free software communities than the NGOs or the social movements, the way they were built before, because what connects people is the projects that they are working at. But that doesn't mean that we are crazy for tools and applications. That means that's highly political in the sense that we are working over things that have political value and that we believe that this can help power to be better split between people. If you can come back to the slide before, just I think one example of things that this can change, we could help on writing the access to information law in Brazil that passed through Congress last year. And because of all the noise that we were making on the internet, people came to us and asked, is this law prepared for open data? And we could actually mix up the text with the principles of open data. So we have a law now in Brazil that says that when government releases information, it has to be in open formats. It has to be in machine readable formats. They are supposed to let our applications to access their system to get information out of there. And I think, I think this is really important. But then again, this was all over the internet, right? And we say, ah, but this is on the internet. What kind of broader change can this bring? And we all are also thinking of that. We wanted to go to places and we wanted to find people and go to the cities and see what was going on there to see what this hacker culture and this transparency culture could actually change in people's lives, like in the place where they live at. So we wanted to buy a bus and that was the idea. Let's buy a bus. But we wanted the bus to be ours. We didn't want to go for a big company and ask them, can you give us money to have this bus that's going to take your name forever? So what is sad, we went to the internet and we used this tool that's called Catarse. You guys have Kickstarter here, so it's pretty much like it. You release your projects. You can have tons of sponsors instead of have, having only one. 
And we asked for 40,000 reais, that's pretty much $20,000 for people to help us to buy a node bus that would build as a hacker bus. And not only we made like 58,000 reais, much more than we expected, as almost 500 people believed on this idea and helped us to have the hacker bus. And this was the bus before we bought it. <laughs> and, it it's, and this is the bus after. And more than being painted and really colorful and beautiful, it has a lot of people on it. So the hacker bus is pretty much it. It's a bus that serves for the transportation of these hackers over there. Many of these people are developers, but many are not. Many are journalists and activists and people that work for organizations and lawyers. And they just came to this community because they thought there was a different way, different way of doing things there. Many people would ask us, why do you want a bus? And we would answer like, seriously, it's a bus. Like, can it be cooler than that? Like, we're gonna have our own bus. But as that sometimes is not enough, like we could make a lot of stuff. Can you go back to there? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we can, we can make with our bus. Like recently, we have been, I think we traveled like a couple times already. This is, this is very new. So we started traveling with the bus in November last year. But we did that around five or six times and we're like running OpenStreetMaps workshops where people can build their free maps that don't rely on Google Maps anymore in their cities. We are running workshops for people to learn how to make bills, how to write their law projects, things that they wanted to become law and how to run this through this process together. We are showing people how to access technology in a, more, in a different way that's not only for your computer screen, but knowing how it works, like opening up, breaking it. It's, it's all part of the hacker culture. So. I think the hacker was and things that we came through Transparency Hacker for the last three years are a good example of the capacity building that the internet and this new way of association and society can build things in the real world, like as real as a bus. So that's it. <laughs>